Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wellbeing Wednesday. It's our last one in July, 26th of July. You're very welcome if you're watching live or the recording. Today, we'll be talking about all sorts of things, but to get us going is the wonderful Dr. Garth Alphonse. If you have never had the privilege to have watched one of his workshops or um, webinars, he is a health researcher specializing in dementia prevention and recovery. Good morning, Gar. Good morning. Lovely to see everybody. Thanks for inviting me. Over to you. You have the floor. Have the floor. Marvelous. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put a few things out here um, around teeth and gums because this is the topic for today. I'm going to uh, touch upon infections, fillings, detox, organs, and the jaw. Uh, and the link down the bottom, DementiaPioneers.uk, is where I will load my present. It's already loaded. So if you go there and you want to download this presentation, it's there waiting for you. And let's jump in. Okay. Mouth infections, herpes, gingivalis, these are root causes of dementia. And if you get a cold sore, it goes away. They'll give you some cream or some lotion or something. And you put it on it and it subsides and you can live your life. And, and then the next time you have a major stress, it comes back. Why? Because you never got rid of it properly. So these have to be um, removed completely. Um, chronic mouth infections are found in Alzheimer's brain. So we do autopsies. I don't, thank God. But autopsies of Alzheimer's brains um, find these uh, infections in them. Um, chronic infections lower your immune system. We don't need our immune systems lowered, do we? especially now. Um, and even if the symptoms go away, the infection remains and it must be eliminated from the body. So that's infections. Fillings. Aha. Everyone's got um, some information for you, no doubt, on fillings. Um, they're basically, these old metal fillings, they're, if they're cracked and if they're loose, then I would get myself to a biological dentist um, for a removal. And they'll only do one or two at a time because, and they have to do it properly. It's gotta be done um, to a procedures because when you loosen up that filling and the mercury leaves, um, it needs to be extracted. There's a really cool video on the gas that actually leaves from the mercury filling and how close is that filling to your brain? So um, yeah, it has to be done properly by someone who knows what they're doing. Um, chelation therapy can be used also. Um, it's recommended for heavy metals, but obviously that's gotta be supervised. Um, so dangerous toxins for the brain are the heavy metals, um, cause a broad spectrum of brain related diseases, not just Alzheimer's, but autism apparently, um, ALS, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease and neurodevelopmental diseases. And then fluoride, we're all really familiar with this. Okay, so this lowers your IQ, folks. Uh, fluoride dumbs you down, for sure. Uh, it's linked to learning and memory impairment, fetal brain damage, and altered neurobehavioral function. What's this got to do with teeth and gums? Toothpaste. So uh, I'm sure there'll be more information in the course of today's session about um, up in the game for your toothpaste choices. Okay, some detox strategies here. Um, this uh, on the right-hand side there, that's um, a process whereby they've taken um, old uh, metal fillings, taken them all out, hopefully properly, um, and then replace them with white composites. And they go to great lengths to make sure that the, the new composite that they're putting in matches exactly um, your teeth. Uh, so it's not really, Glaringly obvious that, oh my God, you know, look, it doesn't look like dentures. It, it definitely looks like your real teeth. Uh, okay, so here are some detox strategies on um, foot spas. I don't know if, it, if there's anyone on this call who's not done a foot bath or a foot spa of some kind, but it's really good because when you do that, the pores in your feet open up and you, all sorts of stuff drains out. Um, and you can use a variety of different ingredients. I, um, in your foot bath. Uh, and there's also a little machine that you turn on and it draws it out as well. Um, okay, castor oil packs. Look into that if you don't know about castor oil packs. That, that's amazing. Um, oil pulling. This is something I had not heard about until I did the PHA. Was it the PHA talk that I did? 
Uh, no, it was back. I was uh, working with um, Deepak Dristi, the uh, Gujarati group, and um, they were talking about oil pulleys. What the heck is that? Sounds like something kind of weird, but I'll check it out anyway. Um, and it's really good because you just put a teaspoon of a tablespoon of coconut oil in your mouth and swirl it around for like 10 minutes. And then you spit it out into tissue because it's toxic. It's loaded. It just draws it out. It actually, the oil pulls um, toxins out of your body and it detoxifies and it purifies. And it's a, it's a cool thing to do. Um, you can juice fast and you can do all sorts of fasting. And I'm not an expert on fasting, except that I know it's good for you. So look into that if you're interested, if you've never done it. Um, and then find yourself a biological, also called organic dentist, um, I found recently. So um, biological dentist, organic dentist, this is someone that you need to be caring for your teeth. Um, and then obviously the non-fluoride toothpaste. Here's a couple more detox strategies. And drink enough water, folks. <laughs> That's pretty obvious, but we need water for all sorts of reasons. Um, eat fermented foods. Um, and you'll know what those are. Probiotic yogurt, kefir, um, pickled cucumbers, and so on. Uh, increase your intake of polyphenols. This is my excuse that I can have dark chocolate. Uh, and consume sulfur-rich foods, because sulfur-rich foods are really good at detoxing. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, spinach, onions, in particular. Um, and then milk thistle. Apparently, it's very good. I've never tried milk thistle, but there you go. That's some of the detox strategies I wanted to go over. Now, this is a chap. If you don't know about Jerry Tennant, you need to look him up. Um, he's an amazing um, dentist, medical doctor, scientist, just incredible. Um, I can't even begin to go into the depth of his work, except to say, in a nutshell, I learned from him that every tooth connects and relates to every and to every organ. So all the organs in the body are all related to a specific tooth. Now, he wasn't the first one to bring this to the attention uh, of the rest of us, but the way he did it um, knocked me over. It was like, wow, that is amazing because he connects it all to healing and voltage. And this is about the electrical circuit through the body. We know about the meridians, um, the chakras. I mean, there's a lot of information about energy and it all comes in in various ways various sources into this whole thing about the body being an electrical um electrical system and an energetic system and we're all just basically light aren't we <laughs> uh anyway decay in any tooth indicates a problem in that organ now like i said this has been known for a while check out this you know the acupuncture meridians okay so uh, Every acupuncture meridian um, relates to a tooth. Um, have a look at this. If you're not familiar with this whole concept, this is, this is just really cool. Uh, on the right-hand side here, we've got um, all the different organs that connect to the teeth. And the organs are kidney, heart, lung, spleen, bladder, pancreas, and liver. And tenant would call these circuits. So the spleen circuit, the bladder circuit, so on. So it just pulls together so much beautiful um, historical um, medicine and healing traditions into uh, quantum, electronic, I mean, you name it. It's like we're in a wonderful time to be alive because all of these pieces are coming together uh, on the same page. And it's all about how to heal the body and what is God in God given, what's already there and what we can best do to maximize it. Uh, and then we got one more slide. This is really cool. Um, every tooth is numbered. You've got your top teeth and you've got your bottom teeth and they're all numbered. So this chat over there, um, top and bottom teeth runs right through the middle of this, of this chart. And then it goes up and then it tells you the organ that it's connected to. Now, the teeth are an indication of something going on with the organ or the organ. You know, you could have a look at the tooth that's connected to it. Find out maybe there's something going on with that tooth. But the two things are definitely wired. OK. Um, and then above that, this is what this chart offers a, a step beyond what I just showed you is body parts. So, you know, you've got the ear, the shoulder, the elbow, central nervous system, uh, 
whole range of different body parts that are connected to the electrical system. And then check this out, the very top row, the very bottom row. You'll love this, Maureen. <laughs> this is how the emotions are all connected to. So you've actually got a world in your mouth. You know, it, it's just amazing. Um, when I was doing some research a while back, um, I found out that the, the people who were elderly and in the nursing home had um, history going back to when they were young and you had to pay to go see a dentist. Well, if you got a bunch of kids and you're growing vegetables for a living, you know, you're not going to have any money to throw to a dentist. So only the rich people went to the dentist, which is probably a good thing, right? <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, so what these parents did was they just pulled all the kids' teeth out. I mean, this one lady I met, she had all her teeth removed at 13. She got dentures. And the family was like, this is a celebration. This is a rite of passage. I thought, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, so a lot of people, you'll see them with, with dentures. But you might ask them how long they've had them. <laughs> Um, anyway, that, that was just fascinating to learn. Okay, uh, see, I think I've got one more here. Ooh, hello. There we go. Right, now, here you go. It's a pictorial of the glands, okay? So it's not just words, but it's the glands. And then um, what else have we got here? Yep. So there's the jaw, the teeth, and the organs connected. So this, this comes from all sorts of different uh, professions and uh, different sorts of trainings and, and understandings that there's a lot of people out there in various modalities and various um, methodologies of health that understand this. So you, you're not out in left field by talking about this. This is my last slide. How many of you know or have experienced the fact that your teeth are all kind of going crooked and wonky and dentists will tell you, you've got too many, you need to remove <laughs> teeth. Yeah, right. Well, actually, if you've read James Nestor's Breed, this is an amazing book and I learned so much from reading this. And one of the things I learned was all about the jaw and how our jaws have shrunk. Um, and so just have a look at these, these quotes here. Um, 10 times more cavities, severely crooked teeth, obstructive airways, and overall poorer health. Why and when? When we stopped chewing, when we started eating processed food, okay? Replace the traditional diet with modern processed food. This is what happened. Our ancient ancestors chewed for hours. They were always chewing on something. And you, you look at that, you know, the Aboriginal mouth, absolutely gorgeous. Like, oh my God, look at those teeth, you know? There were no cavities in those days. So anyway, well, that's many reasons why there were no cavities in those days. Um, but because they chewed so much, their mouths, their teeth, throats, and faces grew to be wide and strong and pronounced. And food and industrial society was so processed, hardly required any chewing at all. I mean, you know, and now we gulp our food and uh, mouths became too small for the face. It's not that not you've got too many teeth. It's that your jaw is too small to hold them all. Okay. And this brought on breathing problems and blocked airways. Okay. So if you got, if you, got you know, anything to do with uh, um, the, um, if you've got breathing problems at all, then this is, this could be an, an issue here. Uh, Dr. John Mew, check him out. He's got this thing called mewing that you can do, and it'll actually help you grow your, your jaw. Um, the younger we'll look and the better we'll feel, um, and hard natural foods and chewing gum. And I'm not talking about the crap chewing gum that they will sell you to rot your brain. Let me show you what I've got that I use. Um, this is called mastija, and this is the one I mentioned down there. Um, and also Turkish thalim. This is not chewy, fruity, <laughs> you know, um, easy to chew and full of color, uh, full of flavor and stuff like that. It's nothing to do with that. 
This is very difficult to chew and um, it's from the Aegean island of Chios, which is why it's called Mastiha Chios, tears. But there are, there's a couple of, of, of them. But that, I got all this out of James Nestor's book, okay? This whole thing about jaws, it's absolutely amazing. Chew more. Uh, definitely um, eat foods that make you chew. And then, you know, like when you chew on a stick of um, celery, right? And you get to the stringy bit and you spit that out, right? What about if you just kept that in your mouth and kept chewing on that till it completely went? I mean, just little things like that. Anyway, make sure that you're chewing more. And then um, that's it, folks. So there, there you go. The nutty professor. <laughs> kind of love that. Um, but uh, thank you for the PHA. Thank you for um, having me on. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to go and watch the shows, do that. Um, thanks again to Maureen for the amazing work that you did putting all that together. Um, there's the link to the four sessions if anyone wants to um, go ahead and uh, sign on and um, watch that. Um, and like I said, the presentation is already live on the blog. So just go to dementiapioneers.uk and you can watch this whole thing. And um, I, I can take a few minutes questions if there are any questions. Thank you, God. June's got, June's got a hand up already. Yes. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Okay, you, June, fire away. You, on the first slide, you mentioned a list of things. Um, ACV, what's that? Apple cider vinegar. Oh, of course it is. Oh, thank <laughs> you very much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was a dentist told me years ago that my teeth were too big for my mouth. I had several removed when I was young. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, but but she was enlightened because she said it's because our jaws are getting smaller and our teeth are getting bigger because we're drinking too much milk and too much dairy products. And so it's making the teeth bigger. And she yeah, she was really wise, honestly. Um, <laughs> but but she said we're not chewing enough. And right. the Inuits, the Inuits in northern Canada, they never had dental problems and, and uh, you know, tooth decay until the um, Europeans arrived with white bread. Yeah, yeah. Okay, any other any other quick, quick questions? Where can we get the chewing gum from, Gar? Um, I just found it online. Go okay. to the last slide and look at the name of it, um, and then have a look. Thank you. I'll, stick, uh, I'll put it in the description, yeah. I'll find it. Okay. Oh, Maureen. Maureen wants to, oh, Maureen's clapping or asking a question? <laughs> She's clapping. No, I, I, I thought, no, yeah. no I'm cl clapping, but <laughs> I've never, ever counted my teeth before. Wow. So whilst you were doing that, so if, <laughs> luckily it's not been recorded, I was counting my teeth because I remember when I, I in a, as a child, I never had any teeth problems ever. Never yeah. had a toothache. But I had lots and lots of dentistry. Wow. And, and I remember when I was very small, it was a trauma <laughs> having the four teeth taken. And so I've just been That's counting to, yeah. to see how many teeth <laughs> I've got in my mouth. How crazy. I've known my yeah. mouth all my life. And yeah, I've never yeah. really connected with how many teeth I have. Oh, well, bless you. If I've done that, thank you very much. That's marvelous. I, I want to, the question I want to ask, have you heard of a book? I came across this title years and years ago and I was never able to find it. Death by Dentistry. No. Um, it was a, a talk I went to and I've just had a look on the internet now as a reminder. Um, mm. I came across one copy of it years and years ago and I'm sure, because I remember Death by Dentistry, it's not even referenced anymore. But there is one, <laughs> that, yeah, death and dentistry. There is one there at the okay. moment. Yeah, yeah. But priced right. at over five hundred pounds. <laughs> yes, well, <clears throat> this is what so, PHA... so if anybody out there has a copy of that, would you lend it to me so I? Oh, can lovely, it? lovely. Yes. <laughs> um, what I got to say, uh, I mean, PHA is absolutely amazing because all of this information that is out there that people have to dig to find bring it right to the people. And this is exactly what we need. We need to get all this info and we need to be as healthy as possible because we're entering some difficult times and you know, share the information, spread, spread the news, 
Um, there's a ton of stuff that we can do ourselves to keep ourselves healthy and well. And thank you. Love you guys. Big hug. I got to go. Bye. Thank you, Gar. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Wow. <laughs> All that information and having to digest. How amazing is Gar? Just love him. Brilliant. And um, I'm thinking I've got a piece of my stomach missing. <laughs> I was trying to work out which tooth had gone. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> but um, how many of us are going to go back and look at those slides and work out what's going on with us? It's just incredible. Well, um, I, I, to... I have some of the same charts. This is really interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, Leslie. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask, um, what was his blog address? Well, we can, we'll put it back in. I'll find it. It's the Dementia Pioneers, but I'll, I'll okay. find it and put it in the chat. .co.uk. Okay. DementiaPioneers.co.uk. So just that, I think it's blog forward slash. I'll find it and I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. Okay. How do I find the chat afterwards? In in the PHA chat? Oh, it's Have down the bottom at, here of the screen. Yeah, but once yeah. we turn it off. I'll put it in. I'll put it in. Um, are you on Telegram? Yes. I'll put it in the little um, description and also on the YouTube description as well. So you'll okay. be able to find it. Okay. Okay. Thanks very Thanks, much. Thanks, Leslie. Good morning, June. I know we've spoken to you. <laughs> How are you? All right. Thank you. You used to be able to copy um, things from the chat and, and then paste them, but you can't do that anymore, um, it seems. So, yeah. You have to get it and write it down mm -hmm. quickly while you're looking at it. Oh boy, what a whirlwind. Right. <laughs> so I have a bunch of things. Now, I thought Helen was coming to do toothpaste. So <clears throat> I haven't got toothpaste, but I can quickly find homemade toothpaste if people want a link to that. So that's okay. Um, I, I, yeah. I wanted to talk about this whole, there's other things that can be added into your diet that can help look after your teeth um, as well. Um, and yes, mercury and fillings, don't need to mention that now. Root canals. <laughs> Did you know there's mercury in root canals as well? Just so you, you know. So they're best avoided if you can possibly, I mean, apart from the trauma that's going on. But yeah, to do with the um, reel it back to the inflammation part of the gum disease. Um, now I'd love to have Gar back and have a discussion about this, but if we take the terrain theory approach rather than the germ theory, because if we were to kill off all the germs and the bacteria in the mouth, then we'd be in trouble because we'd also be killing off things further down the system. And we do need um, the good the good bacteria. So I think we have to be careful and I'm going to talk about hydrogen peroxide as a mouthwash because that's quite an interesting new revelation uh, to me um, and I got some information from Dr. Berg to share about that but that's still bleach and it's still antibacterial so I I think it's it's best to be careful um, love the coconut oil been using that for years um, so I think I think it's absolutely a wonderful idea but make sure you don't spit it out in the sink or even in the loo because actually it you know solidifies in at cooler temperatures and the problem with um, with that is of course it will block up your your plumbing so my advice is to take the coconut oil out of your mouth by spitting it into a bin with lots of tissues or absorbent material in it so that it then can coagulate there <laughs> instead of in your um in your plumbing so yeah i mean brushing and flossing and um making sure that you brush before your meals and not after because in actual fact the nhs agrees with this i've got i've got a a, a sheet somewhere i'm going to show in a minute um that brushing before you eat is much better and interesting um correlation with ayurveda keep coming back to that have your sweet foods at the beginning of your meal not at the end 
because if you have the sweet things at the end, the acid attacks your teeth. Then that's why people think they have to brush their teeth after they eat. But if you do that, you're you're damaging the enamel. And so you want to brush before and first thing in the morning as well. That's after you've done your coconut oil, then, then have a good brush. And um, that sets you up for the day. And if you want to brush again at other meals, but most of the time we're not actually, well, maybe we are at home now more than we used to be. But, you know, you can't always go brushing your teeth before lunch. Um, okay, so fluoride. Yes, he's already mentioned fluoride. It's in the drinking water in a lot of places, not just in toothpaste. So we need to really try and avoid fluoride. It is a thing that dentists have known about for a really long time. And dentists in Sweden avoided it for the last 30 years now. You know, they, they have not recommended it. But yet in this country and in Canada, unfortunately, where I grew up, we had fluoride in the water right from the beginning. Goodness knows how smarter I would have been <laughs> if I hadn't had all that fluoride when I was a kid. Oh, my goodness. It's a wonder my brain even works. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's horrific the way that they try and hoodwink people into saying that fluoride is good for your teeth because it's not it actually coincidentally makes your enamel briefly harder but in the meantime it mottles your teeth it does all sorts of other awful things to the rest of your system including calcifying the pineal gland and as garth garth said it's um it's a precursor to dementia all the heavy metals are so we need to get rid of them so in terms of inflammation what we need to do to reduce inflammation in the mouth is not attack the um the bacteria so much is to try and avoid things that that actually um, create inflammation. So what are they? In Chinese medicine, there are hot types of things. So sugar is a classic. It's very hot in energy. It's not just because it's it's got the ability to um, lurk in your gums and get down in the pockets between the gums and the teeth, which is also a, a good reason for flossing. I mean, there's arguments back and forth against flossing but it's stimulating the gums there is a really nice way and i'm not going to stick my hand in my mouth in front of you but you can massage your gums with your finger and that really stimulates the circulation which is really nice so having having fewer inflammatory type foods so fewer processed foods um fewer fewer things with with added sugar in them um certainly will help and and trying to have more uh, unsaturated fats, so things like butter, um, omega oils, eggs, and greens, and they produce all the right vitamins. Um, there's vitamin A. This isn't Chinese medicine, sorry. This is stuff I've got from other other sources. But vitamin A. And you remember that the, the sailors had scurvy when they didn't know about vitamin C. So you know, vitamin C is really important for the for the gum health. You know, it's actually um, that's quite disconcerting, Kathy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so there there is a digestive enzyme in the mouth called lysozyme, and um, uh, I think Judy Judy is Judith is here. Wait a minute, Julie, Julie, sorry, Julie, about the kinesiology. We can we can balance the enzymes in the body. In the in the digestive system, including lysozyme, and and that needs to function really well to help prevent uh, gum disease. So you know if you if you have a kinesiologist, a health kinesiologist particularly, where they've got the little test kits, they can actually muscle monitor you and find out if you've got a right balance of enzymes in your system. So um, yeah, oh I've got so many notes here. Just to cross out the ones I've done. Um, so going back to the emotional side of things, Louise Hay has got many, many lovely affirmations about different parts of the body and problems that can occur. Um, so I just looked these up um, to, to share with everybody. Uh, gum disease. I am a decisive person. I follow through and I support myself with love. For the teeth, 
I make my decisions based on the principles of truth, and I rest securely knowing that only right action is taking place in my life. Now, abscesses, that's a whole other thing, which we're not necessarily going to go into, but that's another thing that happens when the teeth don't meet properly or when you get um, irritation happening down inside. People would say it's an accumulation of bacteria. It's not necessarily. I'm, I'm not a proponent of germ theory, and if you want to look up terrain theory, I'd suggest go to Dr. Sam Bailey for one or Dr. Andrew Kaufman because they've got loads of good evidence um, about that. Um, but abscesses can occur when you get one tooth removed, top or bottom, and the other tooth corresponding on the other side hasn't got somewhere to meet because when the teeth meet, they massage each other and then they massage the gums. So if, if you've got something that's not hitting the other tooth, then it's not getting the massage. So the gums, so that's when you need to do the physical massage. Or get some dentures. Yeah, I know, I know people who had all their teeth removed like that. That was shocking, shocking to me because they couldn't afford the dentist. They just pulled all their teeth out. Such a shame. But anywho, um, okay, so root canals. I create firm foundation for myself and for my life. I choose my beliefs to support me joyously. So now I'm going to just show the screens that I've got. Um, I'll, I'll show a picture of tooth pain uh, remedies chart. This again, it uses the meridians and you can take a screenshot of that if you like. Is it full size? Let me just there. Um, take a screenshot of that toothpainremedies.net. You can look that up. And yeah, where you have the tooth removed, the other teeth do move. They don't actually stay fixed and anchored where they first came through. I know that their, their roots are actually in the jaw, but they can actually move and their movement tends to be forward. So um, yeah, it's really a shame people taking out the wisdom teeth. I'm not entirely sure they are full of wisdom, but you know, it's, it's like they said to come when we get older. So maybe that's why they thought they'd call it that. But uh, that, that is a, a very interesting chart. Um, okay, so what else I've got is fluoride toxicity. Again, if people want to see this, this is just a real quick part of uh, uh, one of Dr. Mercola's um, sheets that he's got. So many, drmercola.com, I think, is his website. So many interesting things about fluoride and, and well, just general health. Um, so, yeah. It, it can actually do a lot more trouble than just the ones I named. So, you know, we need to, there is a bit of an epidemic of thyroid malfunction. I noticed this about 30 years ago, so many women on thyroxin, and then now so many more women on other hormone replacements. And I think we, we've gone so far down the route of disrupted, um, disrupted natural systems that we, uh, we haven't got. So yes, holistic dentists. Holistic dentists. Um, hang on a second. The best dentistry is no dentistry. So th this is this is the thing about the children and the breastfeeding. This this is such an issue. I have heard this before. And Rachel brought this up again just recently, that breastfeeding is causing tooth decay. Now, breast milk is very high in, in sugars, but they're natural sugars. Um, it's, the, it's the refined sugar that is the issue, not, not breastfeeding. And, and I, I really feel very sad that dentists are going around telling women to stop breastfeeding because they're causing their children harm. I mean, no mom wants to hear that. <clears throat> and it's already the default mode of being a mom that you feel guilty about everything anyway. So, you know, why give them something else? So I think I think the thing to do with a child that's got teeth issues when they're very young, you've tried to feed them all healthy things and they won't necessarily, but you can do other things to help them 
you know, if you can give them supplements and, and stuff like that, but not fluoride supplements, please. I was offered fluoride supplements for my son when he was just a baby. And it turned out that we lived in a very highly fluoridated area. So that was a really ridiculous thing for them to say. And I went on to did some research on fluoride and I discovered that my hometown was the first town in Canada to have fluoride. Ironically, the, the year I was born. So right from the beginning, you know, we had we had all of that. So yeah, so interesting. There's a list of, of things here. Dental hygiene, nutrition stories. I'm not quite sure. I have I've read this but so long ago, I can't remember. So again, do not brush your teeth bef immediately after eating. Wait. If you want to brush your teeth after eating, wait half an hour. And there we go. The NHS agrees. So a holistic dentist, these are organic or natural dentists, dentists who tend to approach things in, in a more wholesome kind of way. So they would not be recommending amalgam fillings. Um, I mean, white fillings aren't perfect. They're still a, a, a not a natural substance, but, and they don't last for as long. But, you know, they're, they're much, much better than the, the amalgams. So, finish with cheese. <laughs> um, you know, I don't tend to recommend cheese to people, but, you know, don't finish with your sweets after you've eaten um, because you make your saliva more acidic with the sweet thing. Um, you can have disclosing tablets. You can, you can do all those kind of things. I wouldn't use those with children though. Um, so yeah, soaking muesli overnight is also a really good, uh, a good thing to do. And then these other grains, the true grains, they're low in acid because, um, they, they were our original grains. I mean, we didn't eat wheat in this country until fairly recently. You know, it's it's always been barley or um, or the other the other kind of grains. So, you know, it's it's something that it and it, here stories. <clears throat> stories have shaped our opinions. And like Gar was saying, we get our ideas very young. We get we get impressions and we need to we need to actually maybe change those stories and just look at new ones. So, yeah, so we've got teeth crumbling here. Antibiotics are another cause of problems for that. Low fat diet and not chewing enough. As, as Gar was saying, you know, that dentist I, I spoke to, she said, we need to gnaw on bones again. Now, <laughs> that's not going to offend the dent, the, the, um, the vegans and the, um, and the vegetarians, but, but yeah, maybe we ought to be more like dogs and gnaw on bones. Weston A. Price Foundation, um, is another really good website for, for helpful stuff about teeth. Uh, that's where I first heard about, um, about oil pulling. And so, yeah, there's, there's the oil pulling right there. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's probably enough on that one. I'd like to try and pull up now the, um, the little video about the, hang on a second, the little video from Dr. Berg about the, um, I'll just close some of these. There you go. Okay. Too many windows open. Always a problem. There he is. Okay, so we're going to try this with the sound because we were working on the sound thing the other day. Even if we can't, he's got it all there. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. So basically, it's hydrogen and water in equal parts. Um, it's antibacterial. See, he still talks about the germ theory, sadly, but never mind. It's, it's very good for whitening the teeth. If you feel like your teeth have become mottled with... Um, fluoride or with other things then or age they tend to yellow as we get older um, but you only swish it for 30 seconds it's really important not to swallow it in this instance because you'll end up swallowing any bacteria that that will pull out like the like the coconut and you don't necessarily want 
those bacteria in your mouth down in the rest of your body. So, can you hear this? No? Okay, just hang on one second. I think what I needed to do was do a, a thing, another thing. Yeah, yeah, we, we worked it out, didn't we, Kerry? And then now it's not there. It's not there. Never mind. We can you still got, see. June, on your, on your, um, when you share, have you clicked yes. on the left? Share sound down the bottom. Oh, there, of course, that was it. Yes, there was it. I knew it. I, all right, try again. But your white blood cells actually make hydrogen peroxide as we'll a defense this. mechanism we'll to kill off invading bacteria, funguses, parasites, yeast, candida. Ignore so basically that, what right? it does is it oxidizes the layer of microbes. Okay, so it destroys the cell wall of invading microbes. Now, when we produce hydrogen peroxide in our bodies, we have various enzymes to um, dismantle it as well. Um, but hydrogen peroxide will then turn into H2O plus oxygen. And there's other types of oxidizing compounds that are created as a byproduct from this that will help sterilize the area. I'm not going to get into those. All you need to know is that you can use hydrogen peroxide for various things. If you cut yourself to clean the area, you can put some hydrogen peroxide on it. It bubbles up and it kills off the microbes. Um, also, you can gargle with it. Um, one tablespoon, which is 15 grams, of hydrogen peroxide to 60 grams or four tablespoons of water. What you would do is you would drink it, swish it around the mouth, don't swallow it, but you can gargle with it if you have a sore throat. You can just swish it in your mouth for 30 seconds to kill off and cleanse the microbes in your mouth. And you can use it for many other things, from removing a stain that you have on your clothing, and you can even use it to clean your vegetables. Uh, you take a half a cup of hydrogen peroxide, mix it with two cups of water, let your vegetables soak in it for a few minutes, rinse it off, and you have some clean vegetables. Anyway, I just wanted to create this quick video on hydrogen peroxide, and I wanted you to comment below on your experience with hydrogen peroxide. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. I do love Dr. Berg. I don't agree with him about everything, but I do love him. Oh no, what's happened? No, 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 no. You all right? We don't want to listen to that. This we can't when, hear anything. When, um, when YouTube goes rolling on and starts the next video, so annoying. Okay. I know. So, we can't, we can hear you. We can't hear the video. We didn't hear that one. Okay. That's good to know. So I went on a search for hydrogen peroxide. It appears it's very difficult to get hold of. He's talking in America where you can get white vinegar in, in, in every supermarket in great five liter containers. You can get bicarbonate of soda. You can also buy borax. I found a borax, not the, not that borax should be put in your mouth, not saying that, but borax is another thing that's hard to get hold of these days. But you can find hydrogen peroxide online. I did find a little, um, a little website and well, maybe it's quite a big website. I'm not really sure. But most of it's Amazon, and I'm not going to recommend people to go to Amazon. So, but there's a, a little website called Bobby's Healthy Stores. And um, so that, that, was, that was the really interesting place I found. Um, somebody in our local health food store recommended that to me because all of the, the pharmacists, the supermarkets, any, everybody said, no, the hairdressers don't even sell hydrogen peroxide anymore because it's too strong. You want to make sure you get 3%. That's the food grade one. And then you dilute it, like he said, three. Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. And then you still dilute it after that. So you, 
yeah and it's great for cleaning all sorts of things as well so it's <laughs> a lot of people were when i grew up people did have it in the house and i just felt oh yeah it was there it was just one of those things however our parents did go around spraying people with ddt because they thought that was good for us too so you know <laughs> but but hydrogen peroxide is actually really safe as long as you use it as directed so so that's that's a really good thing so i've got um another little fun thing chocolate toothpaste is better than fluoride how's that again dr mercola does have a sense of humor but also it's actually based on a on a bit of research because dark chocolate helps to remineralize the teeth so you know people can argue till the cows come home about chocolate still having sugar in it yes yes but it actually is theobromine is better than fluoride and that's from actual research so yeah remineralization occurred at a greater rate than when they were treated with fluoride so yeah nice and i think that's almost everything that i wanted to do but um yeah Ooh, let's just see i'm so happy june i'm so happy because two things firstly i'm not allowed to have sweet things after dinner but what I do have is I always have one or two squares of dark chocolate. So I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dark, dark chocolate is very warming. So again, thinking about the inflammation effects, you know, you don't want to overdo it. Small, small bits is better. And, and also it's very good for the spleen in Chinese medicine, which likes warmth and it likes to be, you know, loved and cared for and, and eating eating with care and attention and chewing everything properly many times and you know paying attention to your food that's just so important for the spleen and for your teeth so yeah a wealth of information and knowledge i just and, love uh, learning more things too every every day is a learning day it is it's so exciting and i think i said to you yesterday just how everything overlaps and comes together and we're all on the same path and we're helping each other. It's just fantastic. Yeah. I just, was going to try and find the toothpaste thing, but I didn't have time. So there is something in one of the PHA back issues of the newsletter. Jo Joseph Lacey um, did put in a toothpaste, a uh, homemade toothpaste. And I think Rachel makes her own toothpaste too, don't you? Rachel's put something in the chat. So what I'll do is I'll print it out and then I could share it as well. Brilliant. Brilliant. I just want you know, I just want to say something about rubbing your teeth with dandelion leaves as well. Yeah, I don't but know I don't that. know the full story behind that. So maybe we can't recommend that right now. Yeah. We can get some more information. I, I just was laughing to myself because um when when I asked you about the percentage of hydrogen peroxide, and it reminded me of when I was younger and my mum you know, and you said what parents and families used to do. And I had to go into the chemist and ask, ask for liquid paraffin for my granddad. And I went and asked for a liquid paralyzer. <laughs> <laughs> so look, don't you gonna rest this child? <laughs> I just ran out of the shop, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> She's trying to kill her. <laughs> No, that's terrible. What's going on? Oh dear, it's been mad. And and the other thing I wanted to ask, because obviously um, all of us and PHA, whenever we present a problem, we like to find a solution. Mm. And look at thinking back to Gar's slides, and obviously everything went really quickly. So I know I can look back, but just to help people that are watching, if you find if if we do have these mercury fillings without um, terrifying everyone. Yeah. And we don't have the ability or the money to extract them. The detox, metal detox that he suggested, is that what we follow because of that? Yeah, yeah. There are there are some very useful minerals, and I don't know what they are just off the top of my head. There are other books that talk about this. Um, there's two guys called Zip and Zam. <laughs> I don't even know if they're those real names. But but my dentist, my holistic dentist, 
um, where I used to go, which is the where where Seb Lomas works now. Um, he he recommended these books for me um, about um, amalgam fillings and and mineral chelation. It's chelation, chelation. It, it it these certain minerals go into the body and they they help the body dispose of these things because they go everywhere. They don't just go to your brain. They go into every every cell of the body. So we're we're full of quite a lot of junk. But you know the amazing thing is that we still keep functioning. The body <laughs> will still it's 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 determined to do its best for us, no matter what kind of crap we throw at it. So, you know, it's, it's, we're all still here. Hooray. <laughs> Hooray. Um, I was just wondering if you'd like to do some cross crawl. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And that's then I great can for phrase... the brain and the circulation. Yeah, and, then I... and you can do some more movement as well. Fabulous. And I'll do a little bit of balance after that. Yeah. Excellent, because we haven't got Robin yes, today, sadly. So, yeah. Thank you, June. Okay. Right. Well, cross crawl, as you may or may not know, is from kinesiology. Um, it's from actually a branch of kinesiology that I don't practice called Brain Gym. Um, and there's also um, educational kinesiology. I, I'm not sure which one of those um discovered it and and invent, but we've been using it in touch for health for a really long time and um and we we actually recommend people just do the basics there are so loads of different corrections and things like that that people can do but basically it's your right hand on your left knee so this is where i can't get back far enough this room is too small right hand on your left knee left hand on your right knee and swing the, the arm that's free back and away so that you're not, you know, you're not doing this because that's not really how it works. It doesn't help. You have to get the two sides moving right away. And then you've got different varieties of it, of course, once you get the basics. You know, Carrie does some wonderful you know, versions of it when, when she does her movement. I love it. Um, and then you, you can do backwards ones and you can do, um, you know, sort of John Travolta. Robin likes this one, I think. The sideways one where you, Saturday Night Fever, if you have anybody who just remembers that. <laughs> um, and and then backwards, if you, if you want to lift up your one heel and cross over and touch with the other foot, that's, there we go. It's great for all the muscles too, because you know, if you can sat on your back side and the back of your hamstrings, then you know you don't they don't get used a lot these days. And so they get a bit tight. So there's there's a question of making sure that that works better. So yeah, that's that's cross crawl. Are you ready, Kerry? Uh, brilliant, thank you, June. <laughs> I love that. I just thought we'd um, just to finish off because we haven't got much time. Just a little bit of balance, just to see how we're all doing and if we've improved. Um, I wasn't expecting to do this, so I haven't not in the right place physically. So let's hope you can see me. But we do a few variations. Obviously, if you're um, balancing uh, for the first time, or even if you just want a little bit of help, make sure you've got a surface you can grab hold of. Don't lose your balance, stay safe. So oh, the first thing we cat. can try, <laughs> I know, look, how many cats has she got? She's like the cat lady. That, that should help with <laughs> your balance. Brilliant. So just start by lifting both knees one at a time. I'll lift mine high so you can see what I'm doing. Just give the legs a little stretch. We've warmed up with a bit of cross crawl anyway. Just do a couple more and then we'll just flick and see if we can hit our bottom with our heel. The key to this is to keep your foot um, relaxed and floppy. If it's tense, you can't always hit your bottom. So, and if, and, and if you have a bigger bottom, you've got more chance for hitting it. <laughs> so just do a couple more. And then we're just gonna do a few progressions. So you can start just by coming and putting the um the toes on the floor and not lifting the foot completely so that would be your first your first progression and then from there if you want to just lift the whole foot off the floor 
So you're just coming up a little bit, just lift the foot. And see how long you can hold it. Hopefully you'll do about 10 seconds. Just have something to hold on just in case. And then you can raise the leg a little bit higher. So just bring the knee up. Keep the shoulders nice, relaxed. Whenever you're in a balanced position, if you move any other body part, it makes it slightly harder. So if you start raising the arms up and down in this position, you might feel it harder to balance. And I, what I find really hard is then to move the head side to side. For me, that is the hardest bit. Just moving your head. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, and then when you see someone else go off balance, that throws you as well. Just relax that leg, let's go to the other one. So just toes on the floor to start with, and then lift the foot, hold it for a few seconds, and then if you want to, take a little bit further by lifting the knee higher. We'll bring the hands to the front, I've got enough room now. And then out to the side. See how that feels. And then you can keep your hands out and take your head side to side. How's everyone doing? Too easy. You've all progressed brilliantly. And relax. Get a nice little shake. This time, if you want, bring the leg high. And then take the knee out to the side. Oh, how are we doing? Excellent. And do you remember the lovely Shell that used to do yoga for us? I'm sure she could grab hold of her toes and extend the foot. So that would be another option if you want to. Oh, look at Maureen. Fantastic. If you're in this position, can you turn your head? to the opposite way that the knee is pointing. Whoa. Oh, June didn't even move. Well done, June. <laughs> okay, bring the knee back to center, relax. Whoa, give your hip flexors work, give a shake. And then bring the other leg up and take it to the side. Obviously with this position, you're keeping your hips forward, you're not turning. Maureen, Maureen, show us how it's done. Grab your foot and extend. Look at that. I want to see this in action, garland dinner. Look at this, I must improve. Okay, and look over the other shoulder. <laughs> Whoa. Well done, and relax. Okay, let's do some behind extensions. Again, hold on to something if you want to. First of all, just lift the foot off the floor. You can't see mine, but it's lifted. If this is comfortable, you feel okay, you can just start to tip forward. I'm gonna hold on, just come looking forwards. So you're gonna tip forwards and then slowly extend that leg. Again, hold on to something if you want to. Your arms can be forward, behind, out to the side, whichever you find most comfortable. What you want to do with your head is look slightly ahead on the floor so you're not extending the neck. Just slightly ahead and then hold. Well done, that looks beautiful. It doesn't matter how high the leg comes, just try and keep it in line with the back. So you're not in a really strange position like this. And relax. Let's change sides. So lift the foot first. Hold, and then when you're ready, you can extend the leg behind you. Well done. And ease off, relax. This time, if you want to, but make sure you've got to hold something if you need to, keep safe. Try closing the eyes, no more in likes trying these things. So in your balance, ready, and then close your eyes, but have your hands ready to support you if needed. 
makes it that little bit harder. You might only be able to do it for a second, but that's okay. And then change legs. You can, as an option, do this facing forward. So just lift your foot or your knee and then close your eyes from here. That's slightly easier. She says and pulls over. And relax, how did you do? <laughs> you look great. So when you've done your balances, just as they're static balances, to take it one, one step further, we've done this before, is to move. So again, on one leg, you can take the foot forwards and the leg backwards without putting the foot down. So you're flicking it forwards and backwards. So you're still balancing, but you're moving. So you're needing your whole core to activate and keep you strong and balanced. Can you feel your supporting foot <laughs> and an ankle? All this, careful. <laughs> All those tenders and muscles working to keep you strong, have something to support you if you need to. I would do about eight to 10 extensions and then try the other side. So lifting forwards and backwards. I think I'll keep going if you can for about six more. I think I've said before, if you're used to wearing trainers or shoes, try and do it bare feet because it's much um it feels much different and you'll be able to splay your toes so they can really grip the floor we should do a lot more without shoes shouldn't we ladies in fact when you're doing your morning grounding you could possibly do this two things one stone okay just relax we do one more so that this is an even further extension of the balance and you could do a nice lunge down i don't think you'll be able to see me but both feet face forwards one foot behind the other and I'm just going to bend the back knee ignore the front leg just bend the back knee the front leg will bend and you're going to touch the floor if you can with a nice straight back shoulders forward and from here you're going to slowly come up and then lift the knee so slowly down, touching the floor, and then slowly up. Let's do four more, shall we? Well, one more. If you have trouble lunging, don't find it comfortable, you can just bend both knees and then bring one leg up. So you don't have to lunge. Otherwise, change legs. Don't forget, both feet go forwards, one leg behind. Come all the way down and then bring the leg up. Do three more. Well done and relax. And just because I feel my arms have been left out of this, it's going to do a few little shoulder rolls. So facing forward, just big shrug up, breathe out in and out and then if you want just make the shoulders a little bit rounder nice circle in and out with all of these make it gradual so now you can start lifting the elbows and then make it even bigger bring the hands up the center of the body 
nice and gently. And then if you want, when you're ready, take it to a full arm swing. Breathe it in and exhale in. Inhale, exhale. One more. And let's just go the other way. So the shoulders come forwards. Small moves to start. And then start lifting the elbows. So you can keep it at any level that you want. And then make it slightly bigger. And then when you're ready, let's do four big. Shoulder rolls. And then just because I'm a bit funny like this, one more backwards. <laughs> and give yourself a little clap. Well done. Hopefully that's just got the heart raising a little bit. <laughs> well done. Are there any more questions? That was brilliant fun and so exhausting. It's amazing, isn't it? How you can get your heart rate up by not actually doing very much um, jumping or, or anything else. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this morning, ladies. It's been very, very interesting. I've learned so much as always. Thank you, June. Always great to have you and listen to you. You have so much information. And big thank you to Gar, although he's had to go. Again, that was amazing. And whatever you're doing today, have a wonderful Wellbeing Wednesday. Thank you for joining us on behalf of the People's Health Alliance. Thank you and hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.